Hey guys, welcome back to another Workflow Wednesday. I'm Phil Brown with JetCAD Cam. That being said, is if you're new to this segment, what we do is we cover things inside of Fusion that improve your workflow and get into the nitty gritty of things that will definitely change how you think about Fusion and how you even think about your parts. That being said, this week we're gonna go ahead and cover how to, one, use thread for both milling and the design side, as well as lathe. But outside of that, we're also gonna cover how to make custom threads and where this value is coming from and how easy it really is to do. So let's go ahead and jump in and do this. So as you can see on my part right here, I have two holes. These holes are half inch holes. They're designed to just be nothing more than a half 13. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply our threads to that. So from here, we're gonna click our thread tab. We're gonna pick our surfaces that we want, again, holding my control button and simply pick our half 13. Now you can change your class of fit and things of that nature if you're not familiar with that. But as you can see, when I inspect this, I'm getting a 423 diameter, which is my tap pre-drill size. Now, let's say, for example, on this here, if I wanted a custom thread that is designed around form tapping, I need this diameter to be much bigger to relay to my guys or to make things like hole recognition work even better for setting this up. So what I'm actually going to do is let's go back and now let's just create some custom threads. Because if you go into the actual thread menu, you're going to notice that the outside of the class of fit, there's really no way to say form tap versus cutting tap, things of that nature. And Autodesk, I know you guys are watching my videos. I get these questions all the time about weird threads or, you know, pretty standard threads nowadays that are missing to include form threads and other things. But from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I like to just take the shortcut of going to utilities scripts and add-ins, and then I'm gonna right click on just about any one of these inside of here and open its location. Now, what I'm looking to do is I'm going to go back to the top level of production up here in my toolbar, and then I'm looking for that BOC3 folder. We're gonna go down to Fusion. We're gonna go up to Server, and then again, Fusion a second time, and then lastly, Configuration. So this is where you're actually finding where all this information is being stored, whether it be you using the whole data, or in this case, we're looking at thread data. We also have that ability for like tapered thread data to be actually modified and make your own custom threads. So again, I know a lot of people out there are looking for certain threads that are tapered and that nature, you could actually edit it the same way we're gonna edit here. So I'm gonna go into my thread data. And what I'm gonna do is I'm looking for that unified screw thread chart. I am actually going to do a copy and paste, control C, control V. And the reason for this is, is so that I don't mess with the original file in any way, shape or form. And I'm actually just gonna add form taps to the end of this. So as you can see, we just renamed that here. We can click into it. It's gonna open up in Visual Studio Code if you have Visual Studio Code installed. I highly recommend having it installed. But what we're now looking at is basically all the data in the background that generates into those drop downs in those different fields. The first thing that, again, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little updating on the name. I'm doing this up here at the top, just changing these couple of things so that when we look at Fusion, it's going to be recognized. So we have form taps and there we go. So again, we've updated our naming. We're going to go ahead and hit save. So let's walk through what we're looking at here, right? So if we start to go down through here, we have everything from our angle of our threads. Then we get into the sizing of our threads, right? So here's our actual thread diameter. Again, you have your actual designation by name, how it's being called out, your threads per inch, for example. And let's go to actually the half 13 here so that it's a little clearer to understand. So nominal size is half inch. You have your actual nomenclature of what we're calling it out. You have your threads per inch. And then we get into the nitty gritty, right? So you have both an external versus an internal kind of version of this. If you're using the thread tool, it works both internal and external. Well, in the case of my holes, they're internal and we're form tapping them. Unless I guess you could form tap an OD thread. However, we're gonna go to the internal category. Now from here, we could actually go through and we could say, you know, this is a 2B fit. You can also go down, you're gonna see your 3A class of fit, things of that nature. But what I'm really looking for is on that minor diameter is I wanna change that minor diameter 
to whatever my actual minor diameter is for form tapping. Now, in this case, the minor diameter may not actually change. However, I am going to update mine to the 46, what is it, 46875 diameter. And what that is going to do is you can also, or getting a little mixed up on my words, is that is going to change the physical minor diameter that we see inside of Fusion when it's modeled. Now, my tap drill size, this is a secondary parameter you have. So your minor diameter might be different than your actual tap drill size. And you could actually signify that right here. I'm actually updating both to be, I can't remember the exact size. I think it's like 15, 30 seconds or something drill size based on that decimal right here. So now that we have that, we could go ahead and save it. And what I'm going to do is we're going to jump back into Fusion 360 now. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of this. And I'm going to go back to that threads that we've created. And we're going to go into our chart. And what you're going to notice is we now have our form taps. And if I go to half 13 right here, and then we're going to go down to that 2B fit, Notice how that has dramatically opened up that hole. Now, I'm pretty sure I have a pretty heavy typo here, and I can almost guarantee it because I put 669, not 469 in, and, but how you can actually see that this is working in real time. So as we update one thing, it's pulled through automatically and brought that into Fusion 360. So let's just switch our class of fit here real quick while we go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's go ahead and change that 66. Do a four, again, hitting save. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and go back into Fusion. So you could have duplicated a lot of this and added it to that other chart if you wanted. I'm just basically creating a separate chart in real time so that I could have my form taps separate than my normal taps. Now, if we go ahead and measure and inspect this, as you can see, that's a 469 now call out inside of Fusion 360. So that is now giving me my perfect tap size for what we're doing. Again, keep in mind, guys, you can do this with internal, external, tapered taps, or thread sizes all in one shot. The great thing about this is, as you're seeing, is we've updated now the actual thread so that whoever my operator is in the manufacturing workspace would have that ability to see that those are threaded holes and that when you run things like hole recognition, for example, we could actually pick up on those holes automatically, right? So as you're seeing, as we could say spot drill tap through, and then we could set up our half 13. And then if we hit OK, we're going to pull our tap drill sizes automatically for these. Again, I'm going to get a couple errors here as you guys are seeing. And the reason for that is, is because we don't have necessarily all those tools inside my library. But there's my drills. Again, I would need to add in specific drills and set those up. But let's take this a little bit further, right? So now that we have our custom threads, when you go into manufacture and do your drilling, again, the cool thing here is, is the diameter is 469, right guys? So it's automatically now telling me that my tap drill size of 469 is what needs to be utilized. So again, we go to our library, we pull our 469 drill, scroll down just a little bit further here, 46875, that 530 seconds, we don't want the, or 1530 seconds, we don't want the reamer, we want the drill. Again, my speeds and feeds. And then from there, we pick our faces like always. And you guys are pretty familiar with this. But now it gets even better than that, right? So now if we change our thought process a little bit, and we start to talk about expressions and thread milling. Now, again, on custom threads, or if you want to modify what you have in your thread library, which I would recommend doing versus having to guess all the time on thread milling, if it's a common thing that you do, if I go in and I actually say I want to do thread milling here, is I'm gonna go ahead and pick my face. We're gonna to have to define a thread mill real quick, so I'll build one. Again, we're gonna go thread mill. Let's just say my thread pitch is 0.5, and we're working with a single point, and let's just say it's 3 eighths of an inch, right? And we'll go ahead and reduce the shank as well, just so we don't have any craziness as we get going. So again, based off everything that I've set here, I have my pitch, and everything's set. We could go ahead and hit accept. And now by picking that surface in there, what you're gonna notice is one, it's gonna bring through a thread pitch for me, which is 0.5, and that's coming from the tool. So even though I messed up the tool, and we could go back and edit this. Again, I typed in 0.5 thread pitch versus 0.05, right? 
What you're going to notice is by setting this is it will auto populate inside of Fusion based on the tool. Now, for some of you out there, if you're using single point, a single point tool works for a lot of different things, right? So what I would recommend is let's change some of these expressions, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit this expression and we're basically gonna delete everything. Now, what you're looking for is in our pitch category is we're looking for auto thread pitch, right? So if I scroll down here a little bit, we should be able to find auto thread pitch. We're gonna go ahead and double click to insert that and hit okay. And now what you're noticing is based on our 13 threads per inch, that thread data has came through. The next thing is, is our thread diameter, right? So again, we can remove this zero and we could go down to the auto. And what I'm looking for is auto thread depth, right? And I think it's actually up towards the top. So give me a sec here to find it, auto thread depth. However, in thread milling, Inside of Fusion, we actually have to usually double that number because it's radius versus diameter, or this is where you can actually compensate it inside what you're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave auto thread depth. As you can see, it's bringing through 15 thou right here to be able to machine that out to give us our automatic thread depth for creating that profile. Again, we did oversize drill these, so if you're somebody out there that's not wanting to drill holes with 2014 because you know you're not working in aluminum on quarter 20s you want to go like 203 204 again this is where all that value comes in is because this is now recognizing and doing the math for us based on how deep our threads are going to be again if you wanted to edit this expression and save it you're more than welcome to so let's go ahead and say times two again we go ahead and hit our okay and then as you can see it actually opened us up for going in and doing our thread milling now, in the case of this part, we haven't really faced anything off yet, but it's gonna look a little screwy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that stock model off. And if we simulate with machine, again, let's get the stock out of the way. You'll notice that we're going all the way down to that bottom and then we're opening everything up. And if we look down from the top, we're actually engaged outside of our profile based on our tool and everything of that nature. So. From a thread standpoint, I hope you guys know both on mill and laid, this actually works very well. Creating those custom thread profiles that you need for your actual system is very, very valuable because when we give a lot more visual representation out to our guys on the floor or our programming guys, but it also allows our programming guys to use the data that we plugged in, right? So we no longer have to play the guessing game or the bouncing back and forth. We can even actually do our record our manual inspects on these guys as well, which is super neat at the end of the day when you consider you can plug in additional information right here in real time. Again, Autodesk, I love that you guys uh, watch my videos. If we could actually pull that data right here inside manual inspect, that would also be extremely handy. But again, is I'm creating all my process inspections for this part off that thread data that has been carried through from the design area all the way into the manufacturer area. If you guys like this content, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. As always, it's not what you know, it's who you know, and you guys know myself, Phil Brown, over here at JetCAD Cam. That being said, you guys, actually, Fusion 360 is on promo all of January. We are also offering our top tier support also at 30% off to match that. Feel free to use the link down below to get purchased or reach out to me with any questions you guys have. And as always, have a great rest of your day.